Okay, this is a screencast, Elements of Life. This is Half-Life. Then we'll talk about fission and fusion. Um, it should be pretty short. Um, so, we're going to start with Half-Life. Um, Half-Life, the amount of time it takes for one half of a given amount of radioactive isotope to decay to something stable. Um, the idea is that this never disappears. We're looking at uh, carbon-14 here, okay? The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years, all right? Carbon-14 is a good way of determining the age uh, of once living material. And this can only go back to about 100,000 years, um, and then the numbers get kind of messy. We get carbon-14 from the atmosphere. So every living thing is absorbing carbon-14. So once it dies, it stops absorbing this, and we can compare it to... Um, the current amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere and get a reference of um, how long that organism has been dead. This would be from fossilized material uh, and such, okay? So, again, half-life. The amount of time it takes for half of the given amount of radioactive isotope to decay. So, we have 100% here, 5,730 years went by, and now we have 50% of the original radioactive uh, carbon left over. All right, let's look at another example. If I had 100 grams of radioactive isotope and its half-life was one year, how much of the isotope would remain after two years? Um, this is a way of looking at it. You might be able to think of a different mathematical model uh, to do it, but this is how we're gonna share it with you. So how many half-lives uh, has it undergone? So two years divided by the one year that it, the half-life of this example gives us two half-lives. Okay, so how much of the original 100 grams is left over if it's gone through two half-lives? Well, uh, how much is left? We divide the original mass by two as many times as the number of half-lives. So 100 grams, and we should have units here, 100 grams divided by 2 equals 50 grams, and then we divide 50 grams by 2, and we get 25 grams. So we would have 25 grams left over because we went through two half-lives, okay? Here's another example with some diagrams to it. Uh, if we had 50 billion carbon-14 atoms to start, how many carbon atoms will remain after 22,920 years. Well, this is the amount of time that has elapsed. We know that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. So by dividing this out, we determine that we're going through four half-lives. And then that will tell us how much of the 50 billion carbon atoms that we started with are left. So we have 50 billion. We go through one half-life, so we have half of that amount, so 25 billion. We go through half of the 25 billion, and we get the 12.5 billion. We go through another half-life, and we get to 6.25 billion. And then we go through that last half-life, and we come up with 3.13 billion. So you can run this example two, just like we ran example one, that you keep on dividing um, the amount um, by twice as many half-lives, you know, as we described here. Okay, so that's all half-life is. You just keep on dividing by two for the number of half-lives that you're given. So we divided by two, divided by two, divided by two, divided by two, because we had four half-lives. It shouldn't be that strenuous or difficult for you to comprehend. If it is, please try some practice problems. Please come to cl uh, class with some questions on half-lives. All right, now we're going to switch gears and just look at some other decay, um, but there's, you know, really two categories. We have uh, fission and we have fusion uh, as parts of um, radioactive decay. So in fission, uh, it's the splitting apart of a nucleus resulting in two smaller nuclei. Okay, it occurs spontaneously in highly radioactive material or can be made to happen. If it is made to happen, it's, it's being... Uh, maybe in an, an atomic bomb, or we're using it in a nuclear reactor. And it causes a chain reaction, and that's what this diagram is talking about, okay? So 
So here you have uranium, these big orbs right here. So uranium, this is uranium, this is uranium, and this is uranium. Okay. So what we do is we bombard this uranium with a neutron. So we smash a neutron into this, and that neutron forces this uranium to break apart into two smaller components. All right. And as that smaller component breaks apart, it releases some other neutrons that smash into some more uranium, and it just keeps on building and building and building over and over. And this is what is occurring inside your nuclear reactor um, or in an atomic bomb, is that you get this large chain reaction, and this highlighted red area here is the release of energy, and it's a huge amount of energy that is released, okay? So that's fission. You're just splitting it apart, it's a spontaneous reaction where we make it happen uh, in a reactor, and it's a chain reaction as the picture depicts, okay? Um, fusion, so we're fusing things together. So nuclei, nuclei join to form a larger nucleus, uh, requires really, really, really high temperatures. Um, and these are things that we are finding uh, in stars uh, around the solar system. Um, this does not occur uh, to my knowledge, uh, on Earth, because uh, we don't have um, systems that will allow us to uh, safely maintain this temperature. I mean, this is really, 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 really high, if you stop and think about it. Um, if water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, think about this. Okay, so this is something that's going to be happening in stars. This is a diagram that we had from another previous PowerPoint, okay? So deuterium and tritium are forms of hydrogen, that are inside um, our sun. Um, what happens is under these very high temperatures, because they're moving around very, very quickly, because they have a lot of kinetic energy, they smash into each other and fuse together to create a helium atom, okay? So what you end up getting is a helium atom here, and then you get this neutron over here uh, that's emitted. And as a result of fusing these together, it's a huge release of energy um, as this neutron um, moves away, okay? You can see that there's uh, three spheres here of the neutrons, and then the plus spheres indicate the protons. Here in the helium, since it's a noble gas, you have two neutrons and two protons with two electrons, so it's stabilized, and then this neutron goes off um, uh, in, the, in the star and does some other things, but then you have this huge release of energy. So over time, because our star is making a stable element, it is not going to last forever. It lasts for about 10 billion years, so if you're really concerned, you can start packing now. But, um, you know, eventually our sun is going to, you know, die out, uh, and our solar system is going to change uh, from the current model that uh, in, in, in way it functions right now. So that is the difference between fission and fusion, okay? So we're going to want you to be able to uh, just differentiate between fission and fusion. So we have splitting, it's a chain reaction, spontaneous, or we make it happen in reactors or bombs. Um, fusion is stars. This is what's happening within our solar system. And really what you're looking at is the combining of smaller nuclei into larger nuclei. And it takes really, really high temperatures and pressures to occur. So thanks for listening to this video. Uh, write down any of your questions, try some of the practice problems, come to class ready to, um, you know, uh, quiz yourself and see if you have mastered this content and ask your teachers any questions that you still have. Thanks for listening and we'll see you soon.